Okay, it's already seven. So let's start our webinar for today. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today. Hope everyone of you are doing well. My name is Brian from Philip Futures Marketing, and I will be the MC for today. So during the webinar, if you have any question, do type them into the question box and I will address the question during the Q&A section at the end of the webinars. So before we introduce our speaker, please allow me to introduce our company. As usual, I need to emphasize on our disclaimer where this uh, presentation has not been reviewed by Securities Commission Malaysia and is approved is, and is provided to you solely for general information only and does not constitute any recommendation. We are not liable, liable for any losses arising based on this information. Investments are subject to investment rates. Therefore, you shall seek advice from qualified advisor before making any investment decision. Philip Future is wholly owned subsidiary of Philip Capital Holdings and Jerome Berhad. It is incorporated on 7 October 1995. Our headquarters in KL branches distribute across the Malaysia, such as uh, Kedi, Kota Damansara, Malacca, Binning, Johor, Kuching, Cebu, and also our newly branches in KK. Other than that, Philip Future is a trading participant of Bursa Malaysia Directive Berhad clearing participant of Busan Malaysia, Directive Clearing Berhad, and also holder of Capital Markets Service License, as known as uh, CMSL. I would like to take this opportunity to extend our gratitude on behalf of my company, Philip Features, to our clients. Without you, we are unable to achieve the awards. In 2021, we achieved three awards from Busan Malaysia, the best overall, best retail, and Best Institutional Directive Trading Participant. Our mother company, Fleet Capital, has offices and branches over the 14 different countries such as United States, France, Turkey, India, China, Japan, Vietnam, Cambodia, Australia, Singapore, United Kingdom, Dubai, Indonesia, Thailand, and also Malaysia. For futures, for futures, we cover not only product in Malaysia, we also cover from different exchanges, uh, such as Singapore Exchange, CME, C CBOT, NYMEX, and more. With our strength of global coverage, client able to trade both local and foreign product under the same platform. So basically, this is the product available in uh, Philip Futures. Philip Futures main focus product offering are futures and CFT for right now. For futures, we got uh, index futures, metal futures, agriculture futures, energy futures, and also interest rate futures. For the CFD, which is contract for difference, we got um, Bursa Malaysia top 100 share CFD, NASDAQ and NYSE share CFD, and also US indices as well. Basically, why should you choose Philip Futures? First of all, we provide advisory service such as inquiries. Next, we provide a wide array of products for futures that enable clients to trade both local and also foreign products. Other than that, we send our last market, latest market news and commentary to client every day through email for reference. Lastly, our headquarters have 24 hours brokering and execution support. This is the important for the clients who trade foreign futures and also dealers can assess you at any kind, anytime you want. No matter you are our clients or not, we also offer free one-to-one -one coaching section, free seminar or webinars, and also free online account opening as well. For free one-to-one -one coaching section, the key topics that we are focusing in is introduction to futures trading, and also the product knowledge, platform coaching, and also charting system. We conduct free seminar and webinars regularly, but since uh, we do not have organized seminar at this moment, we will focus on providing more live webinars with different topics for you to join. We have successfully launched the first futures trading online account opening in Malaysia. You can now open futures trading account online with no hassle. If you wish to open futures account, futures trading account online, feel free to visit our website or you can scan the QR code right here and it will directly 
direct link you to the online account opening form and you need guidance on online account opening, please do not hesitate to contact us. For free account opening, you will receive a complimentary mobile and desktop platform at no cost and access to web array of products, including global futures, commodity interest, rate futures, index, and metal futures. The platform for future trading is uh, Philip Nova, which is commonly used by our clients to assess global products. <clears throat> for the desktop version, it is a web-based platform, but for the mobile version or tablet version, you can trade using a Philip Nova application can be downloaded from your, uh, from your phone which allow you to trade anywhere at any time. So next, go to our promotion. So uh, currently we got three promotions. So for the first one, we call Awesome Reward. This campaign divided into two parts. For, so for the first part is the cash reward up to four, four top 400 ringgit Malaysia when you start trading on uh, FKLI, FM70, FCPO or FEPO with terms and conditions applies. And then the second part is you can also uh, receive a one-time food panda voucher when you are opening a Philip Futures account and start trading. And then for the second campaign, <clears throat> second campaign is the trade CME micro futures at uh, USD 2.50. As title wise, you may know there is a US indices, silver and uh, all US uh, treasury you will be at the promotions rate of uh, 2.5 USD per lot with terms and conditions apply. So do not miss out the, this if you were an investor who would like to trade CME micro futures. Lastly, uh, this is the Philip Star products. The promotion, the promotion product included micro WTI crude oil, e micro gold, and also SGS China F15 index commission as low as uh, USD3. So at the promotion, it will last for the years. Uh, so do not worry, you can still design in the futures. Uh. Okay, so basically how you contact us, you may contact us now on Facebook, LinkedIn or YouTube by just searching Philip Futures and Iran Berhad and Telegram by just searching Philip Futures. Do like and subscribe our page. If you haven't, we consistently update our events, promotion, announce, announcement and market news to all the platform. And also our recorded video will be uploaded to our YouTube channel as well. Okay, so if you have any in inquiries, please do not hesitate to contact us. E even if true, maybe you can call us, email, website, live chat, or also you can uh, Facebook messenger us. So our, our representative will contact you as soon as possible. Lah. Okay, so let me introduce about who is our speaker for today. So speaker for today is David Lowe. David Lowe is a full-time trader and managing partner of Xmodus Trading Group PLT, a consultancy specializing in providing bespoke trading strategy and coaching for private and corporate clients in the equity or commodity directive market. So basically, the, uh, David Lowe has 24 years of experience in Malaysia listed directive industry before starting his own consultancy. David Helm leadership position in the futures broking division of major investment bank in Malaysia is immediate past president of the Malaysia Futures Broker Association from uh, 2018 to 2019. So without further ado, let's invite David Liu to start his section. So I'll pass to you, David. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for the very, very nice uh, introduction. Okay, let me get some uh, housekeeping done, show my screen. I hope everybody's uh, hearing me good, okay? Uh, put in the chat group if it's a yes, uh, thank you for that, just to reconfirm. Okay, so uh, is everybody seeing my screen as well? Okay, I hope everybody's seeing my screen good as well. Okay, so um, good evening and uh, welcome everybody to, uh, joining us for this session. Uh, very interesting session. Okay, we will be uh, exploring this topic about this big question. Will uh, US or rising US interest rates kill the gold rally? 
Okay, why are people worried about the the rising U.S. interest rate killing the gold rally? Uh, a lot, a lot. I think uh, gold is one of the uh, favorite uh, uh, investments among Malaysians. I think uh, a lot of Malaysians love uh, to trade in gold and also love to invest in gold and buy gold, right? Um, I, I also understand a lot of my relatives have been asking me about this question about gold as well, okay? And a lot of people, I think, in the last uh, two years have uh, got involved, okay? So the, uh, in this very, very, uh, very, uh, what do you call that, uh, volatile environment, okay? So these very big questions about where gold is going is right in the forefront of everybody's uh, minds. Okay, so uh, we hope to explore this uh, topic in more uh, detail uh, this evening. Okay, we will talk about various scenarios, uh, look at various things that's happening around the world, and also introduce you to a very interesting uh, uh, trading instrument uh, uh, in US interest rates. Okay, it is very exciting. I'd like to share with you this evening as well and introduce you to this product. Uh, later, we'll see. It's called the Micro Treasury Yield uh, Futures, which is very interesting to participate in the uh, US interest rates as well. Right. So um, uh, before I start, I'll just uh, click off my webcam so as not to, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, distract you with my moving head. Okay. Uh, I'll, of course, uh, lock in back later during the QA. Uh, remember that uh, we have Q&A session later and uh, please put in all your question and questions that you want to be answered into the, uh, the chat box and I'll take all those questions uh, at the end of the session. All right, so I'll click off my uh, webcam first and then we'll start uh, the session. <coughs> okay. Webcam. All right, so no distraction there. Okay, let's start. How to position yourself for the opportunities in gold and U uh, interest, US interest rates? Okay, so this will be the uh, main theme today. Of course, we'll answer the question, how is this rising US interest rates? Uh, is it going to kill the gold rally or it doesn't matter? Okay, so let's explore this. Okay, disclaimer, uh, this, uh, remember, uh, this information and uh, in the webinar is uh, presented for your general information. Uh, it does not constitute a recommendation or an offer uh, to buy or sell the futures contracts here. Uh, if you want to take action on the ideas that you get from this webinar, uh, please uh, talk to your licensed uh, futures broker in Philips. Right, let's get on with it. That's me. Okay, um, Brian had given uh, already introduced me. Okay, so this is what we're going to cover tonight, okay? Uh, first, we have an overview and outlook of gold price and also interest rates, okay? We will uh, explore the key fundamental drivers. What are the key things that's driving these two markets, US interest rates and gold, okay? And see what's affecting them and uh, what you should be looking out for. Okay, and then we will move into the technical reading, and this is the important part as well. Okay, which part of the trend is gold now, or which part of the trend is the US interest rate currently? Uh, is it the start of the trend? Is it the middle of the trend, or is it the end of the trend, right? Uh, long term, short term, what's going to happen in the next uh, coming weeks? So, we are going to go into looking at the different uh, phases of the uh, gold and US interest rates and see where. Uh, current prices and which phase the current prices are at. Okay, and then we will look at potential price direction scenarios. Okay, we will look at different. Uh, we'll look at weekly charts. We'll look at daily charts and see what are the possible price directions. Right, and of course, with all these ideas and different types of uh, uh, price direction scenarios, we will also see how to use these as trading opportunities. Okay, what sort of uh, trading opportunities come up from uh, uh, looking at these charts? Okay, and we'll look at uh, using the CME Group uh, gold and interest rate uh, products to trade the opportunities in the market. Okay, various tools that are available on the CME suite of uh, micro contracts for gold and also the treasury yields. Okay, and we will discuss in, uh, we will go into live charts at the end and towards the end of the session and we'll look at different strategies to create the current market cycle. So, okay, you look at the live uh, trading, uh, of course, markets are live now. Uh, we'll go in and look at the live charts and see what are the latest developments and what are the current developments in the, the, the price direction. Okay, so this is what we're going to cover. 
And uh, these are the current things that uh, everybody is currently looking at and at the top of everybody's mind, the key fundamental drivers, okay? And all these uh, are, are basically driving a lot of volatility in the market, okay? Uh, of course, uh, um, the main thing that has happened this year uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, hyping up the volatility is the conflict in, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, between Ukraine and Russia, okay, and this has uh, caused a lot of uh, of uh, things to happen, okay. Uh, it's uh, uh, basically uh, uh, in terms of energy costs, in terms of oil prices, in terms of uh, food and commodity prices, things have really been bumped up by this uh, conflict in Russia, right. So this is one of the key things that is closely watched, whether this particular conflict uh, will be uh, resolved uh, in the in the uh, in the near term or is this going to continue to escalate okay and if it's escalate and things become worse uh, then uh, you know it's something that we need to watch the developments on this conflict this is a very important thing to watch right and uh, all these things uh, even before the uh, the russian ukraine conflict came uh, or even last year we have seen commodity prices continue to climb okay uh, escalating energy prices escalating commodity prices okay and this has uh, basically what has uh, really pushed uh, uh, all these things is the, the, the main uh, trust that everybody is in everybody's mind now is inflation, okay? Uh, whether it's the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve, okay? It's also, uh, in a way, uh, struggling to keep up uh, with uh, this rising and, and, and runaway uh, inflation, if you can say that, right? So things are getting more pricier and pricier, okay? And of course, uh, this was, uh, uh, all these things started uh, because in the last two years, we were in this pandemic, okay? And uh, now we are, of course, slowly recovering, okay? Uh, but, but the pandemic is another factor we still have to watch because the developments in terms of how China, right, uh, handles uh, the pandemic, because, you know, there's this outbreak in China, and then uh, uh, a lot of people are concerned that with the outbreak and uh, with, the, with China's uh, 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 handling of it, uh, using the zero, uh, what do you call it, COVID uh, strategy, right? Uh, and uh, they are afraid of the lockdowns that may actually uh, disrupt the global supply chain, right? And all these things basically push up this key point about inflation, okay? The pressures in inflation uh, just keep pumping up. Every single factor that has been com uh, that coming into the market has been basically pushing up inflation, okay? Now, if you are a gold investor, all right, uh, you probably in your head you will be thinking, hey, inflation is really, really great for gold, right? Because uh, everybody's been saying that uh, gold is an excellent, excellent uh, hedge for inflation, okay? So we will have to go in and see whether it's true or not, okay? We will have to see, right? All these factors are basically, uh, as I said, pumping up this big, big uh, word called inflation, right? So let's go in and have a look in terms of technicals as well and as some of the other drivers as well, all right? So in terms of looking at the U.S. inflation, okay, so in March, when the numbers came out, okay, uh, inflation number was 8.5%, okay, and this is the uh, inflation rate we have never seen in the U.S. since December 1981. That's like 40 years ago, right? Some of us probably sitting in this webinar was, was not even, you know, uh, born yet during 1981, right? Uh, but it's like 40 years we haven't seen this high in terms of the inflation rate in the US, right? And it's continuing to climb. And uh, the word on the street is, uh, you know, the, the, the rail on the street, the uh, inflation could be even higher than the official numbers, right? But this is the, of course, the, uh, the official numbers from the US Bureau of Labor Stat Statistics and uh, we'll have to see, of course, in March whether this number continue to climb, right? And uh, these numbers are basically exacerbated or, or by energy prices because oil uh, went above 100 uh, US dollars per barrel, okay? And uh, gasoline at the pump uh, was one of, is one of the most expensive you see in the US currently. Uh, all those energy-related costs uh, are the ones that really have uh, really factored in into the inflation in the US, okay? And of course, uh, made worse by the uh, you, uh, the invasion or the conflict uh, in Ukraine, right? One of those things that really pushed the crude oil prices up, 
Okay, so even looking at the CPI uh, in the US, the CPI rose 6.5% and the most in the last 40 years, right? So in terms of looking at this uh, US inflation, of course, in the mind of a gold uh, investor, gold trader, this is a this is a, what you call that uh, uh, will be uh, good for gold prices, right? So if you bought gold as a, a hedge against inflation, this could should be helpful, okay? And we've seen the what you call that uh, the the gold prices actually rise uh, the last couple of weeks and last few months right so this is one factor uh, which is uh, watched by everyone okay including the federal reserve in terms of looking at the uh, of the the uh, interest rates policy that they have okay uh, last uh, one one and a half years two years uh, the federal reserve was quite comfortable they said the uh, inflation was transitory Okay, uh, but uh, it looks like that perhaps uh, as a lot of analysts have concluded that the Federal Reserve may be a bit late in the game, right? So in terms of looking at the interest rates uh, against the, the, the rising uh, inflation rate, the uh, Federal Reserve could be actually uh, in a very, very uh, uh, far away catch up pace. It really needs to do something very, very aggressive in the next couple of meetings, right? Okay, so in terms of the U.S. Uh, unemployment rate, and this is uh, usually watched uh, during very normal times. Okay, this uh, the employment uh, uh, figures are closely watched for uh, signs of inflation. Okay, and in terms of looking at the, the current number uh, in uh, March 2022, 3.8%. All right, this is the lowest since February 2020. Okay, so in terms of the uh, employment, because a lot of people have jobs, okay, so uh, this number used to be what uh, uh, a lot of uh, gold traders would watch uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, detecting inflation, and the Federal Reserve will look at these numbers as well, right? So in terms of looking at this number, maybe it has uh, played a, 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 a smaller role compared to the inflation, okay? Which is basically screaming inflation is basically uh, in terms of the cost of uh, what you call that uh, things like energy and food that has really been the main factor, okay? Although uh, even if this uh, this particular number the lowest uh, since uh, February 2020 this also uh, will be in in terms of inflation will add to that particular fire as well right so in terms of the US interest rates okay we will be really looking at how the Federal Reserve and in, in the next meeting in May everybody's expecting a 50 basis point hike and then uh, perhaps even more aggressive hikes in the next uh, 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 next two quarters that come uh, for the interest rate uh, decision right so now let's consider this chart over here right this is a uh, chart to answer the question whether gold uh, as an inflation inflation hedge whether it works or not okay and uh, if you look at this okay and we'll run through this this is a uh, it's a, since uh, 1985 until now right so this uh, dates back over over then so in terms of if you look at the uh, this uh, what you call that uh, prices gold prices is the one in orange and the uh, US inflation rate in terms of percentage ish is the the blue uh, uh, line over here okay so you can see in terms of the arrows okay so in terms of looking at in the region from the uh, mid 1980s to 1992 okay uh, we saw actually US inflation rate rising okay but in terms of rising uh, inflation rate, gold actually gold prices actually went down. So um, is that a good uh, hedge in terms of that? Because gold prices actually went down when inflation went up. Okay, so and then it flattened out from 1992 to uh, to about 1997. Okay, and that time uh, the inflation rate uh, went down. Okay. Um, and then in terms of looking at this particular time, 1997 to uh, around 2000, okay, actually gold prices went down as inflation went up, okay. So again, two times uh, gold wasn't really that great in terms of a hedge against inflation. And then in the year around the 2001 uh, to 2002, we saw the inflation rate going down. Uh, but then gold actually climbed okay so you could see actually gold prices started to climb in a year uh, starting up 2001 and it really from there it took off uh, for almost nine to ten years it actually took off to a high right so in terms of looking at that time about overall trend if you look at those 10 years 
okay, you could see that inflation continued to climb as well. So in that, this particular time period, okay, so uh, gold was uh, great in uh, in terms of uh, inflation hedge. It actually uh, followed inflation, right? Uh, but then again, okay, of course you have the crisis, and then the inflation rate uh, uh, totally uh, dropped, okay, and but then gold continued to climb. Okay, regardless of whether inflation went down or not, gold continued to climb, right? So in this later phase, in the last uh, uh, two years, okay, we saw, of course, inflation go down because of the pandemic, but we saw gold prices go up, okay? So in terms of looking at uh, that, this particular question, okay, a popular, what you call that, is a popular notion that gold it acts as a very good uh, uh, hedge against inflation. The track record is, is mixed, as you can see from this chart, okay, since 1985. Okay, sometimes it works, sometimes it does not work. Okay, so in terms of looking at gold, okay, it's uh, you have to look at the different different uh, dimensions. Okay, so uh, just not a one-off uh, relation between inflation. Sometimes it does uh, follow inflation, inflation, and sometimes uh, it actually goes opposite. Right, inflation goes down and it still continues to climb. Okay, so we need to look at multi factors when it comes to uh, this relationship. Okay, so uh, everybody always says. Uh, it's a good inflation hedge, but then uh, it does not all, always up, apply in that way. Okay, so if you look at these three charts, okay, we have a, a, a story of three charts. We have the U.S. inflation uh, on the on the left. Then we have uh, this price here. This is the yields. Uh, these are basically the treasury yields. Okay, of course, treasury yields have been climbing since the end of last year. Okay, so basically this reflects the the, uh, the, U, the U.S. interest rates. And then you also have gold uh, rising, okay? So what gives, okay? Because uh, not all these three charts uh, can have the same, uh, what you call that, uh, movement, okay? So we will uh, later go in and look at the charts and see uh, where uh, uh, these three, uh, what you call that, moving, these three charts are moving, okay? Right, so let's go in and read the current phase of the market, okay? And let's uh, begin with gold. What you have, uh, what you see over here, is the uh, the gold chart this is a weekly chart okay and uh, i'm gonna uh, uh, what do you call that uh, decipher this uh, phase momentum phase with you using the elliott wave okay some of you may be familiar with the elliott wave theory uh, but for those who are not so familiar basically elliott wave is a is a what do you call that is a way uh, to count uh, the impulsive move of a particular trend. So in terms of the gold, is uh, we're counting the the wave. Uh, what do you call that? The wave count of the uh, of the gold in the uh, in the weekly chart. Okay. So currently, of course, if you look at the weekly chart, uh, gold has been on the uptrend. All right. So which phase of the uptrend currently? Okay. So in terms of the Elliott wave. Uh, in any uptrend, there are actually five waves, okay? So uh, in terms of the current wave, okay, the current wave is what we call uh, wave five, okay? So what uh, gold has done is, uh, okay, for this particular phase, if you have gone into gold, uh, those who have bought gold in uh, the year 2020, okay, uh, in the beginning of year 2020 will be very happy, right? But those who actually bought in the middle of the year, there was this uh, really big move uh, from around the 1,005 levels up to the nearly the, nearly the 2,000, uh, above 2,000 levels, okay? So um, a lot of people uh, who have bought early were very happy, okay? But the gold went through a very difficult correction, okay? Uh, from the uh, mid of 2020, okay? and just actually got out of this consolidation uh, range uh, this year, right? So it was flat, okay? It was flat, it was trading between a range of about 1919 to 1700 for quite some time, for many, many months, okay? So those uh, who had bought gold uh, during the peak of uh, uh, mid-2020 were actually uh, uh, holding on to uh, quite a long consolidation, okay? But now there is a breakout at 1919, okay? Which happened in the beginning of uh, this year, 2022, okay? And it actually quickly, uh, in just about two to three weeks, went up to challenge uh, the high, okay? But didn't really break the 2089 uh, high. Uh, the high at that time was uh, chalked up was about 2079, okay? Uh, but this particular up wave, okay? This wave up wave uh, is actually what we define as the fifth wave, 
Okay, so the fifth wave is actually the wave that is supposed to and is expected to remove or to challenge and break out of the wave three high. Okay, if you see the wave three high here, this is the two zero eight nine. Okay, which was uh, in uh, mid of uh, twenty twenty, it notched this high. Okay, and then came down for the long consolidation. This long consolidation is called the wave four. Okay, so uh, wave four actually uh, it retrace. 62% uh, of of this uh, this particular wave three okay it's the drop actually 62% from the high of, of this particular wave okay so now it's we are looking at a wave five okay so in terms of looking at a wave five uh, we are looking actually a projected target of two two four five to two five nine five okay uh, so this is uh, uh, in condition if the wave five does not fail okay why do I say the uh, if a wave five does not fail uh, it's because during this uh, uh, downwards move, okay, in uh, mid uh, of 2020 down to uh, uh, in uh, first quarter of 2021, the, the, the move down was quite deep, okay. So a, a lot of uh, the strength in gold could have been stepped in this fourth wave consolidation. That's why it, it had so much difficulty in terms of getting out of the range, okay. Uh, the 1919 levels was a very uh, tough range. It tested uh, and couldn't close above that. Only after uh, almost one half years, then it managed to close above. Okay, so currently, uh, if you look at the current prices, um, it's still struggling back at this uh, level. Later, we'll go into the live charts and see how, because it's back around this uh, level as well. Hopefully, it can find some support at this level. Okay, so but in terms of looking at the weekly charts, which is uh, a view. Okay, so if you're looking at a weekly chart, Elliott Wave, we are currently we're looking at a view about 20 weeks ahead. Okay, so you're looking at uh, uh, about four to five months ahead uh, what will happen okay so there's a possibility that gold uh, will challenge again make one one more try okay above the 2089 levels if it breaks that then uh, good news then we'll see enough momentum to move to 2002 uh, this this uh, will be the new highs uh, uh, which is uh, projected uh, or calculated for the uh, wave five in terms of the weekly chart all right so let's now move down to look at the daily chart okay a bit uh, daily chart also actually in wave five okay so in this particular up move okay let's go back to the the, the weekly chart in this particular particular up move okay uh, which has its base uh, somewhere uh, towards end of last year okay when uh, then found support around this uh, this uh, box uh, the way four here and this particular move okay so which is uh, which we are now seeing in the daily chart okay which is this particular move uh, upwards okay since the late uh, 2021 okay so it is actually also in the last last wave up okay which means to say that uh, this particular try okay uh, when you want to attempt the the last high okay so you can see the wave three high Okay, this was the uh, wave three high uh, in uh, what do you call that in March. Okay, uh, which is the two zero seven eight levels. Okay, now the it came down. Okay, on the fourth wave uh, retracement. Okay, and now going for fifth wave. Okay, whether this fifth, fifth wave can succeed or not uh, depends. Okay, again this this retracement was very deep in terms of the it dropping down. Okay, so this may uh, uh, have the chance again there may be a fifth wave. Uh, with five okay so in terms of the target zone you can see the target zone 2090 to 2214 so the first target zone is basically near the top of the wave three uh, in the weekly chart okay so whether you can really have enough momentum to break through uh, we will have to watch this one week okay this one to two weeks is very crucial because as you can see the prices now are right back at the 1919 level okay the 1900 psychological level is very important uh, today i think it actually tested uh, uh, and broke through that okay so uh, it's temporarily for the time being not that great uh, great news unless it can be supported and it can close today uh, above these levels okay these are the support levels which are very very critical for this particular leg up for gold right so um, but uh, in terms of if it's able uh, to uh, catch up on its uh, momentum and break through this particular high here above 2000 then i think then we have a chance for it to try to go for the 2078 uh, to challenge this uh, price up here okay so later we'll go into the live charts and see what's happening 
we move on to look at this. Okay, what is causing the trouble with gold the last uh, uh, a couple of weeks is because of the US dollar, right? So uh, currently you're looking at a weekly chart of the US dollar index, the DXY, okay? The dollar have been so very strong, okay? So the strength in the dollar does not help gold, okay? Uh, it, it moves inversely uh, with gold, right? So if a dollar is very strong, then gold uh, 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 it will be a bit in the trouble, okay? So um, as uh, the dollar continue to power on, okay? Uh, in fact, uh, this trend in the dollar, okay, started uh, in mid of uh, 2021, okay? And uh, this trend, you can see the momentum right at the be uh, below this chart, you can see the momentum, the, the histogram over here, continue to gain strength, although the, it's already uh, exceeded its extended target. Okay, the wave three target, is, which is the most powerful wave on the Elliott wave, is uh, between 96 to 100 and uh, 100.61, uh, but it's now already exceeded, right? So, uh, but it looks like the momentum is still very, very strong, okay? And uh, as long as the US dollar is still very strong, uh, it will cause uh, uh, the uh, goal uh, uh, to have some trouble, okay, to climb up, okay. So it, because this moves inversely, uh, gold go moves inversely to the dollar, right. So this is where uh, why the dollar, the gold seem to have some trouble to pick up its momentum, right. It's because of the dollar. Now let's move on and look at the 10-year notes. Okay, this is the 10-year uh, treasury note, okay? So uh, the golden line, the golden line is the yield of the uh, the micro 10-year, uh, okay? So yield is basically the rate you expect from buying a 10-year uh, note, okay? And you can see, of course, the 10-year note have been very bearish, okay? Uh, because the yields are climbing, okay? So yields are climbing very, uh, very strongly, uh, but in terms of the 10-year notes, it's on a wave three bearish trend. Okay, this is a very strong uh, bearish momentum. Okay, so basically implies that uh, you know there's still another wave downwards in terms of the 10-year notes. Uh, but currently, because of the bullish divergence, okay, this is a daily chart. You see bullish divergence. That means the momentum is not confirming uh, this particular uh, one or two weeks uh, downwards move. So you are expecting. Uh, to see basically to see a rebound okay and the rebound uh, because this chart was uh, done two days ago okay you saw the rebound actually yesterday okay uh, because equities were so down quite badly and there was a flight to uh, safety so a lot of traders also bought uh, bought the uh, the treasury notes or okay, bought bonds okay uh, because equities were down quite uh, quite heavily, right? So you can see some rebound in terms of the 10-year notes here, okay? So uh, when 10-year notes, uh, of course, rebound, then the yields will come down, okay? There is an inverse uh, relationship between the yields and the treasury notes, right? So um, we are seeing that perhaps um, some of the micro 10-year uh, yields may come off uh, from their highs, okay? Uh, which they actually uh, later we'll see in the next chart, this is the 10-year yields, okay? So you, you can see, uh, this, this is the micro 10-year yield futures daily chart, okay, and you can see a very strong trust. Actually, this is a, a wave three in terms of the 10-year yields, okay, and now it's coming off, okay, because uh, it, it's probably going to take a break from here, okay, before regaining strength for the wave five, okay. So currently for wave three upwards, um, they may see some uh, selling over here or some profit taking, but uh, the main trend is still uh, on the upwards uh, in terms of the 10-year yield. So in terms of the US interest rates, if you're looking at trading the 10-year yields, then the the, uh, the outlook is still uh, very bullish, although there will be some profit taking at this current uh, moment. Okay, so let's move on to look at the two-year uh, the two-year T note. So this is the shorter term one. This just now you saw the 10-year. This is the two-year one. Uh, same, uh, very similar trend, of course, uh, in terms of the two-year notes. Uh, the uh, two-year treasury notes have been sold down very heavily. Okay, uh, it's also on the extended wave three bearish uh, wave. Okay, uh, the but you can see the momentum has eased off. Okay, so the momentum is not confirming. You have this uh, technical bullish divergence, which basically saying that a technical rebound is expected in the near term. Okay, so this has come back again later. We go in some the live chart to have a look at this. So similarly, in terms of the micro uh, two-year uh, treasury uh, use, uh, it's coming off uh, a bit, okay? So uh, in terms of later, we'll see it's actually went up quite high, uh, tried to challenge the 3% three, uh, three levels, uh, but it's off uh, 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 from the highs, okay? But then the trend still continues uh, to be uh, bullish. You can see over here, okay? 
Uh, basically, what these two arrows show is the bearish divergence. Okay, so basically, uh, for telling that the uh, micro two year micro micro two two year yield futures uh, will come off on the daily chart. Okay, because the momentum is coming down as well. So expect some uh, profit taking uh, uh, in terms of the two year yields. Uh, but we are, you know, for for those uh, who are familiar with the wave four, uh, wave four is where you position yourself if you want to trade the next uh, wave up on the wave five. Then you look for a position at the wave four. Okay, so later we'll go into the the, uh, the live chart to have a, a look at this. All right, so this is. Uh, uh, basically, um, the the technical uh, momentum outlook for gold, for the dollar, and also for the uh, treasury notes, and also the yields, right? So, how do we take advantage uh, of of the uh, movements, uh, possible movements that are coming, right? We talk about the uh, longer term uh, fifth wave uh, on gold, okay, that could possibly uh, reach 2002 to the 2005 projected uh, level. How do we take uh, advantage of that? All right. So in terms of opportunities, okay, there are a few instruments that are very exciting to trade in on CME. Okay, we'll talk about the gold contracts and also the very exciting micro treasury yield futures. Right. So let's get into it. Okay. So one of the uh, very interesting contract to trade uh, on CME is the micro gold. Okay. Basically, a micro gold contract is the smaller brother or of, uh, of the of the big. Uh, Gold contract GC, the very famous uh, uh, gold contract in on CME, right? Uh, this is a smaller one, okay? This is a more affordable one. You can, it's only 10 troy ounce the size, okay? The, the larger brother is 100 troy ounce. So this requires, of course, less initial capital in terms of trading uh, this contract, right? Uh, very one tenth of the size of the benchmark gold contract on CME. Right, and you can also use this contract if you build up a position in micro gold. You can actually use your micro gold to offset with the larger gold contract as well. Right, so a very active contract, even in terms of looking at a micro, it trades about 64,000 contracts on a daily basis. Right, so uh, this is like this this contract is almost 24 hours. Okay, it stops for an hour for rest and continues to trade. And you look at the margins. Okay, margins are uh, the uh, the requirements uh, by the exchange uh, before you need to put in deposit for the micro goal per contract of micro goal uh, it's uh, 825 US dollars. So it's relatively uh, uh, affordable in terms of uh, trading micro goal uh, to have a position uh, in the gold market, right? So this uh, great contract to trade and uh, what do you call that? Express on your your opinion on uh, micro goal 10 troy ounces, okay? Uh, so um, quite a lot of gold actually to trade huh, for 825 uh, US dollars. Okay, the big boy. Okay, the big brother. Of course, this is the big gold contract. Uh, this is the benchmark gold price that a lot of people uh, refer to. Right, um, this contract, this futures contract, trades uh, almost 25 million ounces of uh, gold daily in terms of the value. Right, so this is the world's leading benchmark uh, futures gold contract. Okay, but of course this is a large contract, 100 uh, troy ounce. Okay, 100 troy ounce would be something equivalent to about uh, 2.2 kilos. Uh, to that, uh, to that, uh, so it's a it's a lot of gold, right? So uh, the margins to trade that is uh, 820. Uh, so it's 10 times uh, compared to the micro the micro gold, right? So 8,250 US dollars to trade. So this is a bit heavier in terms of this is the bigger uh, brother, right? Uh, but this is of course uh, where. Uh, a lot of the big traders are trading as well. Okay, uh, up to 40% of the volumes uh, in terms of gold actually, uh, interestingly, uh, uh, transacted in the Asian hours. So the uh, the the Asian hours, a lot of our Asian traders actually trade both the gold contract uh, GC and also the micro gold. Okay, very interesting. So it trades about 263,000 contracts uh, uh, so far in 2022. Uh, per day, right? So it's a very, very uh, active, uh, uh, what do you call that, contract to trade, right? So in terms of looking at the uh, the U.S. interest rates, okay. So I'd like to introduce you to the uh, U.S. Micro Treasury Yield Futures. Okay, this is a contract launched last uh, last year by uh, CME. Okay, and uh, as of February, okay, it's uh, uh, what do you call that volume has already surpassed one million contracts. So it's very active as well. Okay, so this is an extremely interesting contract. Okay, uh, because in terms of talking about trading the U.S. Uh, 
uh, interest rates okay a lot of people who wanted to participate okay especially in the treasury market the treasury market historically is uh, traded by uh, the large traders and dealers right so in terms of individual traders like us okay uh, we seldom or, or maybe don't uh, uh, are not familiar with trading the uh, the treasury uh, futures contracts okay uh, one of the challenges of trading the treasury uh, contracts futures is because of the pricing okay you basically trade the price so to a lot of uh, traders this may not be very intuitive okay because um there are different types of uh, of uh, uh, what do you call that uh, they are the uh, two year five year 10 year and you have the 30 year treasury bond okay each of them are priced differently okay the use may be similar but each of them are priced differently so it's not as intuitive but in terms of looking at the micro treasury u futures okay uh, what is interesting about it is you can actually trade directly trade the u.s interest rates in terms of use okay so it's based on benchmark use uh, of the the, the uh, what do you call that uh, the treasury uh, uh, contract or uh, the treasury note or the treasury uh, bond that's referencing okay uh, of course the u.s treasury is the most liquid uh, uh, largest and most liquid uh, treasury market uh, treasury notes or bonds market in the world right so in 2020 alone uh, you know u.s treasury traded over 600 billion in terms of value per day right per day so in terms of trading this uh, using the micro treasury yield, you count now individual traders like us, uh, we have the opportunity to assess uh, the US treasury markets and trade it, okay? But we are trading the yield instead of trading the price of the, the, the treasury, okay? So uh, looking at these particular features, okay, let's have a look at it. We have actually four contracts in terms of the CME micro treasury yield futures, okay? We have uh, uh, the uh, futures uh, with the reference for the two-year notes, the five-year notes, the 10-year notes, and the 30-year uh, US Treasury bonds, okay? Uh, very active now are the two-year notes and the 10-year 10, 10 notes, okay? And we are trading the direct relationship, okay? We are actually trading uh, how many percent of you rather than the price of the, the Treasury note or the Treasury bond, okay? So uh, as you note here, unlike traditional US Treasury futures contract, which basically trades in the terms of price okay just now we saw uh, the price of the 10-year note and the two-year note okay uh, 100 over uh, what do you call that uh, dollars or uh, so it's sometimes not so intuitive okay so uh, we actually trade the, the the rate now so which is easier uh, to understand all right so in terms of looking at the contract specifications okay each contract uh, all the the four contracts have the same basis point value of uh, 10 uh, US dollar okay so per in uh, per what you call that per basis point okay what is one basis points one basis point is basically 0.01 percent okay and each of these 0.01 percent is uh, uh, worth 10 US dollars okay but the minimum the minimum dollar value of one tick which is one tenth of a basis point is of course one dollar okay so the product symbol for micro treasury U futures for the two year is the two yy for the five year treasury note is the five yy and subsequently the 10 year is 10 y and the treasury 30 year treasury uh, bond is the 30 yy okay so basically uh, these are the codes uh, the product symbol if you're trading okay and uh, uh, basically in terms of the available contracts uh, they trade the two monthly contracts okay so in terms of let's say for example if you are if we go into early may then the two contracts available for trading will be the may and also the june contracts okay uh, let's have a look at the margins what is interesting in terms of trading the micro treasury u futures is the margins are relatively affordable right so if you for example if you're trading the two year uh, micro treasury yield futures then you're looking at us 300 us uh, uh, to trade this contract right if you are looking at the 10 year then it's us 240 so this contracts this micro treasury yield futures are relatively uh, affordable contracts to trade okay and this uh, price and also uh, right size uh, for individual traders right so these are the contract specification let's see how it's traded okay let's look at an example okay let's say for example you are bullish on the uh, uh the 10-year uh, uh treasury yield futures okay so you feel that the 10-year uh, yields are going to continue to go up okay maybe now taking a bit of a break but uh, an opportunity to buy when it comes back down okay so suppose um uh, this example here uh, the april micro 10-year 
uh, yield futures, the 10Y is trading at uh, uh, 2.7, okay, 2.700, okay. So if you feel that the 10-year uh, yields are going to go up, then you enter a long position, okay. You buy one contract, say for example, buy one contract of the April Micro 10Y at 2.700. 2 Okay, so in the first scenario, if actually the April micro 10 year uh, were to rise to 2.800, okay, then you of course be in the profit. Okay, how many points would you be in profit? You'll be in profit for 10 basis points, right? 10 basis points. And each basis point is worth 10 US dollars. So 10 basis point profit will be equivalent to a US dollar, 100 uh, US dollar gain. Okay, so that's how you calculate uh, 10 basis points multiplied by 10 US dollar per basis point. Okay, so you made uh, what you call that if the micro uh, 10 year rises to 2.800, then you have made $100. Okay, which is, is actually fantastic because if you look at the uh, what you call that uh, the uh, the margins, okay, uh, margins are only 240. So here you made almost like a 40% gain in terms of the if the rise okay but of course if the uh, the micro 10 year were to drop to 2.6 then uh, you you your view is up and if the markets come down you may see a loss so in terms of this example if the micro 10 year were to drop to 2.6 then you have a 10 basis point loss multiplied by 10 us dollars per basis points then you would have a hundred uh, dollar loss as well okay so in terms of the calculation of the p l it's quite uh, straightforward okay every uh, basis points move uh, is uh, 10 us dollars okay so it's quite simple and uh, across the four contracts whether it's a two year a five year or 10 year or 30 year bond uh, uh, yield futures they all move in terms of the value per basis point is 10 us dollars so quite simple in that sense right so now um, let's look at another situation. Let's look at the micro uh, goal. Okay, let's example micro goal. If you're bearish on micro goal, and how do we trade the micro goal? All right. So suppose you uh, the June micro uh, goal futures MGC is trading at 1700. Okay. Now each futures contract, of course, covers 10 ounce of gold. Right. Just now we said the uh, the MGC is a 10 ounce uh, goal. So if uh, let's say for example, if you feel that uh, the market's coming down, you can short. You can short the MGC, right? You say, for example, if the price is at 1,007 per, per ounce, if you sell a uh, June MGC at 1,700, and if it drops to 1,650, right? So you have a $50 uh, per ounce gain, right? Because it's a, a hun uh, it's a 10 ounce contract, you will multiply the $50 gain per ounce, multiply by the 10, you get a $500 gain, right? Quite simple to, to uh, calculate, right? Each uh, dollar, uh, each dollar move on the uh, micro goal is worth uh, 10 US dollars, right? So if the June micro goal were to rise, of course, if you shorted the market and if the gold prices rise, then you have a loss, right? In, and in this example, if it rises to 1750, then you will have a $50 uh, per ounce loss, right? And $50 per ounce multiplied by 10 ounces, which is the contract size, will give you a $500 loss, okay? So that's how you calculate the PNL uh, for uh, MGC. And just now we saw uh, how to calculate the PNL for the, uh, the micro yield futures, all right? Uh, now we are going to go into uh, uh, if you have any questions on these calculations and all that, you can put it in the chat group. Uh, I'm going to go to the uh, live charts now and see what's happening uh, before we go to the Q&A. All right, so let's go into the live charts and see what's happening. Okay, so um, I hope we can see the charts. All right, okay, give uh, it a bit of time to load. Okay, so everybody should be able to see it now. Okay, let's uh, wait for a while. Everybody seeing it? All right. Okay, so what you are seeing here, this is the micro 10 yield daily chart. Okay, so we can see, of course, uh, it's come off. Okay, at the high, uh, just done on 20th of April, the high was at 2.9. So you can see in terms of the, the 10 year uh, treasury yield, it actually uh, nearly was able to break through the 3% levels. Okay, but 3%, of course, is a, uh, is a tough psychological uh, level to go above. Okay, so it may come down again. Okay. Um, there is a projection. This is a, a wave three. Okay, we've spoken about that. This is wave three, 
and uh, um, currently we may see some uh, corrective mode okay so uh, in terms of looking at the micro 10 year if this uh, wave 3 is completed over here okay just let me quickly draw something for you okay let me draw a path okay All right. So let's say, for example, this is um, this is uh, with one, and this with um, two, this with three. Okay. So there'll be currently we're looking at possible some corrective mode. Okay. And then afterwards, uh, it will move to wave five. Okay. So this is how it will probably look like. Okay. So currently, if uh, the ten-year micro, ten-year futures is going to uh, uh, 10 year yield futures is going to come down. Okay, possibly we will be looking for position uh, for the next move up. Okay, of course, you can do, uh, you can also short, okay, the, the micro yield futures. Okay, uh, but if you're positioning yourself for per perhaps uh, you want to buy on the on the sell down, okay, so you will be positioning yourself for the fifth wave upwards. Okay, that's expected to be another wave upwards. Okay, uh, to break through, possibly to take out and challenge and uh, take take off the the three percent levels okay so this is what we're currently looking at in terms of the phase uh, for the 10-year uh, micro 10-year U futures let's go to gold and have a look at gold okay let's see what's it doing okay so it's 1897 so we tonight's close is very important or the next couple of the next one week one or two weeks close is very important okay just let me load this chart first Okay, so okay, so we are currently attacking, or the the prices are now coming to this very important uh, area. Okay, this area right here. Let me draw uh, for you. Okay, this area right here. Okay, so you see this uh, pink pink box right here. Okay, this is the the where the the, the wave four consolidation actually uh, uh, found support. Okay, and it's again right at this particular area now. Okay, right at this particular point now. Sorry. Okay, let me bring it down here. Okay, right here. All right, so this is a critical point, okay, because you are talking about the base of the wave four. Now, if this uh, market, if gold were to, uh, what do you call that, uh, go down and close below uh, this wave four uh, base here, that means that this particular wave five were filled, okay. So this would be have been have been a filled wave five. That means this wave five at this current junction, uh, juncture cannot go through and take a new high. Okay, so uh, sometimes this can happen because uh, during this uh, retracement from the third wave, it was a very deep uh, uh, retracement. Uh, it could accept all the energy from this up wave. Okay, so there's possibility that uh, wave five may find some difficulty uh, now. Okay, it could have uh, done a field wave, but we have to see how this uh, wave. Uh, turns out so, okay so watch uh, the daily chart for gold futures and watch this particular uh, point very important point okay right here uh, which is the uh, one eight 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 okay wow yep but 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 dim sum the one the 18 88 levels is very crucial okay it needs to find support and the last uh, uh, couple of days it has found some support let's see today okay it's when uh, went down and then it's uh, basically uh, finding support here like it's basically you saw uh, in terms of uh, today it reached there and bounced back up okay so this is a critical support okay if it, if it breaks down below this uh, wave fall low then we will be seeing actually a corrective move downwards so you may uh, if it breaks and closes below this particular price point the 1888 then expect uh, uh, it to go into corrective mode before the next try of the 2078 high. All right, so that's a goal for you. And we saw just now the uh, the 10 year treasury notes. Okay, um, yeah. So um, I'm going to go back to Q and A. Okay, so I'm going to pass the session uh, back to Brian. Brian, do we have any questions uh, for our session? Okay, but before we go there, I want you to uh, have a look at this. If you have a scanner. You can scan this uh, little T-Rex over here. This is a uh, what we call a trading room analysis. This is a fantastic newsletter that I would recommend you uh, to go and have a look. Okay, uh, every month there are two uh, two 
uh, installments of this newsletter. And from this newsletter, you can actually, uh, what do you call that, get uh, trading ideas, okay? Trading ideas for gold, for interest rates, for equity indices on the CME. So do um, either scan this or you go uh, this type fresh from the trading room, Google it uh, or, or, or check it out on the CME website and you can get uh, the, what they call that subscribe to the newsletter and get trading ideas from there all right so i'm going to go i'm going to go back on the webcam and then uh, back to you brian and see what questions do we have yeah david thank you for your wonderful presentation so let's go to our q and a section there are a few questions now okay Hold very on. good so the first question is is mm. gold still consider a good hedge against inflation and in the current global scenario of stagflation? Mm. Okay, so this is a great question. And just now we saw, we explored the, the chart uh, since 1985. And okay, you could see that in certain scenarios, uh, uh, it wasn't that great of a hedge, okay? It went opposite, the inflation went up and the gold prices went down. But of course, there were situations um, uh, that actually uh, gold uh, went up uh, as uh, inflation rose, okay? So what we actually need to um, uh, monitor is uh, uh, the, the, the interest rates against the inflation, okay? So if there's a huge gap between the US interest rate and the inflation, then okay, that would be very supportive of gold, right? Uh, because this is what we call the real, uh, real uh, uh, interest rates, okay? Because the, uh, you have to, uh, what do you call that, uh, input in uh, the inflation factor into your your uh, the, the interest rates, okay? The, your returns from the interest rate. So if the um, inflation is going to continue uh, to run away, okay, continue to run away and continue to high, of course, this is all very supportive uh, for gold prices, okay? And as you can see from the weekly chart, um, in this particular wave, okay, although currently in the daily chart, it could go on a corrective mode, uh, it is expected uh, to go higher in terms of the wave count, right? So um, in terms of my weekly uh, count, I'm, uh, the charts are still saying that, okay, very still still positive, still uh, uh, potentially can go for the new highs. So in terms of that, uh, in terms of the fundamentals that drive that, okay, of course, one of them is the, the inflation, okay, whether um, the Fed can can uh, hike their interest rates up in, into a point that they can manage this inflation, not, but if it cannot, then the, the, the inflation become a very important factor and goals, goal will, of course, continue to rise due to that, okay. Um, but again, uh, watch out for the US dollar as well, because US dollar uh, is rising, of course, for other reasons as well, uh, safe haven, okay, uh, people are basically uh, putting money, uh, perhaps um, not too positive of uh, the European situation because of the Ukraine-Russian war. So a lot of money is flowing out, capital is flowing out into the US dollar, okay? But once uh, capital uh, flows out into the US dollar, of course, again, that will pressure gold prices, okay? So there are multitude of factors that we need to see. And what is the, the overall thing, okay? You have to think again, in terms of uh, gold, sometimes not only as a hedge against inflation, but a lot of it see, sees gold as a hedge against a crisis. So if a crisis, uh, if the uh, the, uh, the Ukrainian uh, Russian crisis or conflict is going to accelerate into something uglier, then you may see gold become a favor again. Okay, uh, because you know in terms of gold and war. Uh, you know, people, when they think about war, when they think of crisis, they naturally turn to gold, okay? So that's supportive for gold. So we have to see because things are very fluid and, you know, in this volatile time, of course, trade the trend, okay? Whichever the trend is, follow the trend first, okay? But of course, you're a position trader uh, in terms of the weekly elite wave count, uh, there is possibility of it seeing higher prices, okay? I hope that answers the question. Uh, back to you, Brian. Okay, so let's go to our second question. Mm. It's a technical analysis question. Does mm. wake off matters work for gold futures? Uh, okay, uh, personally, I've not tried. Uh, it's a very famous uh, uh, indicator and system, but I have not personally tried. So I might not be able to give you a, a, a good uh, uh, answer to that because I personally don't use it. So I got to apologize uh, if uh, that particular indicator I don't use. <laughs> Uh, okay, understood. So let's go to our third question. Is the Russian rumble and Chinese yuan backed by gold 
will they take over from the US as the world reserve currency at some point in the time in the futures? <laughs> yeah, this is a big, big question. Uh, maybe way above my pay skill to answer that question. <laughs> uh, that will be something that uh, even uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, of course, the 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 US uh, uh, yeah, the the Americans would uh, uh, not want to think that that can happen. Okay. Uh, but of course, a lot of theories out there uh, talking about um, the fall of the US dollar. This is the start of the fall of the US dollar. I mean, those are theories, right? Uh, and and even some of these uh, theories have been uh, um, greatly covered by a lot of noted uh, economists, right? So basically, seeing the rise of other currencies like uh, the yuan as a replacement, as a re reserve currency, okay? But we have to see. Okay, uh, this has still been something which is very debatable. Okay, uh, hard to say, but we'll see. You know, things uh, are so fluid these days. Okay, uh, but I'm of course also keeping uh, a watch on that. Okay, um, this this has been talked about for years actually. Okay, uh, but whether uh, the current situation, um, you know, because you're talking about you know uh, Russia insisting uh, payment for. Uh, the oil in their currency or in terms of gold okay and how china will come in uh, in terms um the china factor have not really been very uh, prominent but could come in in the next uh, china uh, situation uh, uh in the next six to uh, six months to a year that become a prominent uh, feature okay because um as uh, as uh, um, those uh, buyers for oil look for alternative ways to pay for Russian oil. And it may open up certain channels in terms of alternatives to the US payment system. So we have to see. Uh, it's an exciting question that I'm also watching carefully. So uh, we we'll have to see what, uh, you know, it's in terms of uh, reading uh, and, and, and having a predict projection or prediction on that, uh, I, I don't have a conclusive uh, answer for you. Back to you, Brian. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to our last question here. So what yeah. price will gold fill during wave four? Is it when it breaks 1860, which is the top wave one according to EW? Please advise. Mm. Okay, so let's uh let me take you back to the chart now. Eh? Okay, let's let's look at a weekly. Lah. Okay, let's lo look a bit. Now the weekly uh, uh, bottom of the wave four, okay, is right over here, all right. And this particular price point is the one six seven three levels, right. And uh, you can see uh, there are multiple points that this was tested, okay. Uh, it was tested uh, three times and it managed to close above, okay. So this, uh, according to a lot of uh, uh, technicians, this could be the very long-term support levels okay so they they don't foresee that goal to challenge this uh level again but of course in terms of trading we always have to be uh flexible right so this is the bottom of the range and currently this fella right here is right at the top of the range here this defines the range okay so the 1919 level was the level to challenge okay and it broke through Okay, as you saw that it broke through and now it's retesting. So the theory currently now is of course the past resistance are uh, uh, reversed their roles to become supports. Okay, over the next one to two weeks, we can see whether this support uh, is uh, uh, decisively broken or not. Okay, so this is still a live bar, right? See whether this week's bar can close above the 1990 levels to confirm the multiple tests. Uh, this 1919 levels in terms of the the, the what do you call that uh, uh, the testing it tested so many times that uh, you can see uh, this 1990 levels uh, it's managed to always uh, after it broke through it's managed to always uh, um, uh, be close above that okay so we have to see the, this week's uh, closing how it looks like okay um, the only worry currently is the very strong dollar which really pressuring. Uh, pressuring gold prices okay so in terms of looking at the fifth wave uh, okay so let's say for example the the wave four low or is over here and is supported by this particular uh, 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 bottom of the range okay so this particular move ups in terms of the 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 fifth wave okay this is what we call the 
the budding wave, right? That's why I named this the budding wave. Okay, that means it's the start only. Okay, and the start when it first starts, uh, nobody believes that uh, because this is likely to be wave one, you see, wave one of the wave five. Okay, and in wave one, okay, people don't really believe that this this guy the gold prices can go so high. Okay, so there is expected to be selling. Okay, and uh, sometimes in terms of uh, selling. Okay, and when you talk about selling, this will be wave two, uh, wave two consolidation, right? So wave two consolidation can even go back uh, um, uh, sometimes, okay, to to the bottom of the uh, of wave one. So if this is the bottom of the wave one, which is near the 1750 levels, okay, if you say this space around here, okay, the 1750 levels, okay, it can return to the 1750 levels before it makes an attempt, uh, the third wave attempt to take out this high at the 2078 levels, okay. So in terms of looking at the, the EL wave uh, for the next 20 weeks, okay, um, perhaps now um, it's going to take a break, okay, do a consolidation and gain enough strength and wait for things to change in terms of the, the fundamental fundamental factors before it can again challenge the 207 8 and the, the the other high previously the 2089 okay so in terms of looking at the the el wave count currently uh, this is the what uh, basically the momentum is saying and also what the the counts are saying i hope that answers the question uh, brian back to you yeah so let's go to our last question. This is the last one. <laughs> so what are the what other precious metals strongly correlated to gold? How about silver? Mm, okay. Of course, silver has a relationship in terms of uh, 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 moving quite similarly to gold. Okay. But if you look at silver, let's just go and look at silver price. Okay. Mm. Let's take out a silver price so that we can have a look at it. Okay, so what do you see silver now doing in terms of weekly, right? It's basically in a consolidation uh, range. Okay, so uh, it's uh, it, uh, in mid uh, of uh, last year, it was supposed to attempt and it did attempt uh, a high in, Feb uh, high in February, right? So this one uh, tested, but immediately in the same week also came down and continued to consolidate. Okay, so this looks like a very long wave two consolidation. Okay, so um, but in terms of uh, what is the prospect of silver, silver really have to take out the thirty level. Okay, the thirty dollar level is something it ne really needs to decisively take out. Okay, so once it takes that out, then I think then it's going for its third wave, and that could coincide with the with the uh, goals move as well but currently in terms of the EL wave weekly you see it this is a very uh, complex wave two okay it looks a very complex wave two over here uh, you see multiple tries at this level as well okay um, this 21 21 8 or 22 levels is very very heavily supported okay uh, it has been supported for so many weeks since uh, July 2021 okay and, and this may look like a budding wave as well if you just uh, uh, remember how uh, the gold chart look like okay this may be the one okay uh, to start that uh, wave rolling on the wave three okay uh, but we have to see okay um, we can still come down okay you can still come down but you can see here divergences okay what you see right here what i mean by divergences okay you see divergences here okay prices going down but then the momentum moving up okay so in terms of looking at divergences that basically points to a possible bottom right over here okay so similar to go um, on the weekly chart this could be that budding first uh, move on the up wave okay so in terms of looking at that uh, those who want to play for a position if you believe that this particular silver uh, support at least the 22 level can hold okay is held for so many times okay of course it breaks then you can you can turn the uh, position and go short, but at this uh, area, okay, uh, uh, traders may be looking, uh, what do you call that, for a buying zone, right, and near the 22 uh, levels to the 21.9 levels, okay. So in terms of silver, they may have a very similar look in terms of what uh, is coming in the future. So I hope that uh, sort of answers your question. Back to you, Brian. Yeah, it definitely did. Okay, I think that's all for our Q&A section. So let's go to our ending speech. Okay. So uh, thanks, Mr. David Lu, for the insightful sharing. And also thanks to all the attendees for joining today. So if you have any questions, do contact us and we are happy to assist you. 
last but not least check out our promotion it's all in our official website and grab the opportunity to join it yeah so i will end the session for today good night everyone and stay safe bye bye good night bye bye